everyone. Welcome to today's pre-op diet webinar. I'm sorry, I'm just having a, some technical difficulties, um, but we will get started in just a moment. Okay. Okay, um, let's all right, before we do get started, I do just want to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Christina, and I am the nutritionist here at Mexico Bariatric Center. I have my degree in nutrition from um, UC Davis, and I've been working here for almost a whole year. Um, and my contact info is on the screen. It's just my email address is just nutrition at mexicobariatriccenter.com. My direct line is also on the screen. You can call me or text me there um, if you don't have a chance to take a picture or write it down right now. Um, you will have a chance at the end of the presentation. Today's pre-op diet webinar is going to be split up into three parts. Um, part one is going to be the purpose of the pre-op diet. Then we'll have part two, the pre-op diet, and part three, the Q&A. Um, you can add all your questions into the Q&A box if you'd like as we're going along, um, and then I can answer them as we go or um, at the end. So the purpose of the pre-op diet is not to lose weight, but it is to shrink your liver. So this kind of begins the process of getting you into a healthy living mindset, kind of getting you used to not eating certain types of food. Um, weight loss does happen. It's a, a good sign that your liver is shrinking, but we don't have a specific amount of weight that you do need to lose. And the meals on the pre-op diet are good practice for um, post-op. So your pre-op diet length is going to be based on your BMI. Um, and uh, depending on what that is, everyone uh, will still have to do two days of clear liquid. So for example, if your pre-op diet is one week long for five days, you'll follow the food portion um, guidelines, and then you'll do two days of clear liquids. And this is just important to get your stomach um, empty for surgery. But um, the pre-op diet will just kind of help you, you know, start learning how to portion your food. It'll help you focus on quality food sources and it'll help you ditch the um, processed and fatty foods. So the actual pre-op diet um, is gonna be a lot of protein. So the main portions of your plate will be um, lean protein, so that's like chicken, lean ground beef, eggs, fish, salmon, lean steak, turkey, edamame, tofu, tuna. Um, and you, you are allowed to have two to three meals per day. Um, and then you can also have one to two protein shakes per day. And we'll kind of get into that. So the main portion of your plate will be lean protein. And then you can also have as many um, vegetables as you'd like, as long as they're not starchy. Some starchy ones that you cannot have are corn, potatoes, peas, squash, and pumpkin. But you can have all common um, vegetables like um, cucumbers, all kinds of lettuce. You can also have broccoli, carrots, green beans, um, tomatoes, zucchini, Brussels sprouts, peppers, pickles, um, also, you can have onions, you can have mushrooms. Basically, you can have as many non-starchy vegetables as you would like on your plate. And then you can also have um, one to two servings of healthy fats. So that's like your oils, avocado, nuts, salad dressing, nut butters, seeds. And one to, one to two servings is usually about one tablespoon, one to two tablespoons. So just to kind of recap that, your pre-op diet is going to consist of these three main groups, lean proteins, uh, non-starchy vegetables, and healthy fats. And this slide is very important because it tells you all the things that you cannot have on the pre-op diet. So you can either take a picture of this or you can take a screenshot of this, but basically you want to avoid all starches. So that's like your bread, rice, pasta, tortillas, oats, um, any kind of grains. You 
can have fruit on the pre-op diet, but you are limited to half a cup of berries, half a banana, or half an apple. You do want to try to limit sugar as much as possible um, and cut it out or, um, as much as you can. You also want to avoid any processed meats, so that's like bacon, salami, bologna, sausage, beef jerky. Also, you cannot have any potatoes, corn, peas, or popcorn. There's also no dairy on the pre-op diet. So that's like your milk, your cheese, your yogurt, your cottage cheese. It's very important to cut all of that out. There's also no alcohol, um, no drinks containing sugar, um, like no caffeinated, no carbonated drinks, no soda, um, no sweet teas. And two weeks before surgery, you have to stop drinking any coffee or any caffeinated beverages, um, no alcohol and no vitamins and supplements. Um, also during pre-op, you can kind of start incorporating this into your diet where you don't drink 30 minutes before a meal and you don't drink 30 minutes um, until 30 minutes after a meal. And this is very going to be very important for post-op because post-op drinking before a meal can make you nauseous. Um, it can also make you vomit. And then if you're going to be drinking within 30 minutes after a meal, it can cause all your food to get pushed through um, your digestive tract, and so you uh, won't absorb as much, you'll get hungry quicker, um, and also it can just cause diarrhea. So you do want to follow this rule, um, and it could be a good habit to start practicing now. Um, so I already see we have two questions. Uh, one question is, is it okay to do the pre-op diet longer than recommended? Yes, you can do the pre-op diet longer um, than, you know, based on your BMI. Um, I usually actually recommend it just because it can give you um, time to get ready for the actual pre-op diet so you can follow it strictly. Um, there's also no... There's no caffeine because it's a diuretic and we want you to be as hydrated as possible for surgery. Um, and um, just because post-op, it's going to be kind of difficult to drink your fluids. So it's very important for you to stay hydrated even before surgery. Um, and also after surgery, you can't have caffeine because it is acidic. So it's better for us to wean you off that caffeine before surgery than uh, you have to try to heal. Um, and feel better while also having withdrawals from caffeine. Okay, so now we're gonna go into a check your knowledge, but um, just a small little recap. Um, the pre-op diet basically breaks down into three things, lean protein, unlimited fibrous vegetables that are non-starchy and healthy fats. And then two weeks before surgery, you should cut out any caffeine alcohol, vitamins, and supplements. So the poll is going to pop up on your screen. So the first question is, is bacon a good source of lean protein? What about tuna? You can have carbonated water um, on the pre-op diet, but it's also kind of good to get use, yourself used to not having um, carbonation just because after surgery, the extra air um, can cause you pain and discomfort. Okay, so it looks like mostly everyone has answered the question. I'm gonna end the poll and we'll share those results. So the correct answer is bacon is not um, a good source of lean protein while tuna is a good source of lean protein. And everyone got the bacon one right, and as well as the tuna question. Okay, now we have another question. When should you stop caffeine, vitamins, and supplements? Okay. It looks like almost everyone has got this one right. So I'm going to end the poll and hear those results. 95% said, which is 21 out of the 22 that I answered, said two weeks before surgery, which is correct. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, let's move on. Here are some recipes that would be perfect for um, your pre-op diet. And as you can see here, you can still use seasonings. Um, you do just wanna avoid any seasoning mix that have sugar, dairy, or starch in them, but you can use things like paprika, you can use salt and pepper, you can use cumin. Um, you can also use lemon and lime on the pre-op diet. Um, you do, mainly you just wanna avoid starches, dairy, and sugar. Let's see. Um, Stephanie wants to know, can we have low sodium soy sauce and also taco seasoning? So you can have low sodium um, soy sauce on the pre-op diet. Um, for taco seasoning, you just wanna make sure it doesn't have dairy, starch, or sugar in it. Someone said cumin is a blood thinner. Um, it's most likely that you won't be using that much of it in your cooking. Um, if you are, you know, cut down on it, but small amounts are okay. Same thing goes with garlic and ginger. Small amounts of garlic and ginger are okay in your cooking, but you do want to avoid large amounts um, in your cooking. Um, Stephanie also know, wants to know what would be a healthy dressing and is protein measured before or after cooking? So a healthy dressing, personally, um, I recommend just making your own with some balsamic vinegar, olive oil, and some lemon juice. But you can use any oil-based dressing um, that is low to no sugar. You do want to avoid things like ranch because that is that does have dairy or any kind of dressing that has like Parmesan in it. Uh, basically, just avoid any dairy dressings um, and oil dressings are a safe bet. Um, yes, you can use um, add lemon to your water or use crystallite lemonade. Um, you do want to make sure your crystallite is the caffeine-free one. Um, and that would be fine. I see someone raised their hand, but um, I don't know if we have that option on here. Um, and then we'll get back to those questions. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, we're just going to move on because I don't know how to figure that out. Um, all right, so for your pr protein supplements, on the pre-op diet, you should be, you can have one to two protein shakes per day. So we recommend these just because protein will um, help maintain your muscle mass while you're losing weight. Um, also, it promotes healing. And um, if you're getting enough protein during your day, it can um, help you prevent any cravings later on in the evening. Um, and we recommend protein supplements that have a minimum of 20 to 30 grams of protein and less than five grams of sugar. You can have a whey isolate, a combination plant-based egg white, a pre-made shake or powder. Um, and uh, if you do have powder, do use powders, you can mix those with water or unsweetened almond or unsweetened coconut milk. And here are some protein powders that we recommend. Um, these all have 20 to 30 grams or more of protein, less than five grams of sugar. Um, I recommend trying an unflavored protein powder um, just because you can use it after surgery. You can also add it into your clear liquids, which we'll, we will talk about soon. Um, two brands that patients like are Fairlife and Premier Protein Shakes. I know in the back it will say contains dairy, but the way the dairy is processed makes it okay for um, the pre-op diet, so you don't have to worry about that. You just want to make sure that they have at least 20 grams of protein and less than five grams of sugar. And then two days before surgery. So for example, if you're having surgery on Monday, on Saturday, you would start your clear liquids. And on clear liquids, um, the easiest way to think of clear liquids is a liquid you can see through. So the color doesn't matter, but you should be able to see through it. And things you can have are water, you can have 100% real juice that's diluted, 60-40 with water, 60% being water, 40% being juice. You can also have broth, um, chicken, beef, vegetable broth is fine. You can also have sugar-free drinks like Crystal Light, Gatorade Zero, Powerade Zero. You can also have sugar-free Jello, sugar-free popsicles. 
and protein waters um, like Gatorade Zero, Premier Clear, Protein 2O, or Isopure. You can also make your own if you have unflavored protein powder. You can add it into any of your clear fluids. You can also, um, I believe, I think it's just the brand is called Clear Way. You can also buy those packets. You can bring those with you on the plane, or you can also just bring bouillon cubes with you and ask for a cup of hot water on the plane. And then you can have um, some broth to sip on while you're flying. Um, and if you have any medical questions, um, unfortunately, I cannot answer those. I'm not a doctor, but our surgeon liaison, Jen, is a doctor, and she can answer all your medical questions about um, what medications you should stop taking, um, and her info is on the screen. Her email address is just jen at mexicobariatriccenter.com. And her phone number is also there. You can either take a picture of it or you can take a screenshot. Okay, now we're going to do um, another poll question. Can you drink protein shakes, drink clear liquids? Okay, so that should have just launched. I'm gonna quickly check to see if there's any questions on the Facebook side. Um, Hi, Dawn. Um, let's see, that was our only comment. Okay, so it looks like mostly everyone has answered the poll question and we're gonna end the poll. And so people are a little bit split on this, but 80% said no, 16% said yes. So the correct answer is no, you should not have any um, protein shakes on clear liquids, but you can have protein waters. So that's like the Protein 2.0, Premier Clear, Gatorade Zero with protein. Um, those are all great. You can also make your own protein waters. And now for our next question, how many grams of sugar should your protein shakes be under and how many grams of protein should your shakes contain? Okay, give you a few more seconds and then we're gonna end the poll. Okay, so here are those results. Um, your protein shakes should be under five grams of sugar and they should have at least 20 grams of protein in them. Okay, so I know this is Q&A, but this is actually where we're also going to talk about vitamins and why it's important to take bariatric specific vitamins. So it's important to stop taking vitamins two weeks before surgery and then start taking them at 14 days post-op. So the reason why we have you stop um, vitamins two weeks before is because sometimes um, certain vitamins can increase your bleeding risk. So vitamins are important because if your um, nutrition in certain vitamins, it can cause fatigue, can cause muscle and hair loss. Um, you can also have blurred vision, nerve damage, cracked and dry skin, weak and brittle bones. And then just taking vitamins can just help with your um, overall health improvement. So here are some guidelines set by the American Society of Metabolic um, and Bariatric Surgery. So I know like this, this can seem like a lot, but um, they basically recommend that you take a bariatric multivitamin, a thiamine, a zinc, a calcium citrate with vitamin D, vitamin D, iron, and vitamin C, and vitamin B12. But this does just condense down into four vitamins, which are a multivitamin, calcium citrate with vitamin D, iron with vitamin C, and a sublingual B12. So if you are getting a restrictive procedure, um, you should be taking your bariatric multivitamins for uh, six to 12 months. If you're getting a malabsorptive procedure, you should continue taking these for the rest of your life. Um, 
And you do want to make sure your calcium is a citrate, not a carbonate, just because after surgery, you're not going to have as much stomach acid and the citrate is easier for your body to break down. Also, you do want to make sure that there's vitamin D um, in your calcium citrate because it does help the calcium get absorbed into your body. For your vitamin, you want to make sure um, you're taking it with vitamin C because um, it helps the iron absorb in your body. And you also do not want to take your calcium and your iron together. These should be taken at least two hours apart um, to because they do compete for absorption. You should also take a vitamin B12 supplement. Um, you could either do the shots or you can do um, oral or the kind that dissolve under your tongue. Um, and here's a sample vitamin schedule um, based on if you get all four, um, the multivitamin, the calcium citrate, the iron with vitamin C and the, and the B12. Um, so in the morning, you can take your multivitamin, then a couple hours later, you can take your iron with your B12, and then you want to wait at least two hours, and then you can take a calcium citrate and a multivitamin. And this is if you do a drinkable vitamin. If you do a chewable, you would have to do the bariatric multivitamin in the morning and in the afternoon. Then you would have your calcium citrate at 10 a.m., the iron with the B12 at 12 then the calcium citrate um, at two and six. And the reason why we have you split it up like this is just because you are taking a lot of vitamins um, and for maximum absorption, it's just better to split them up throughout your day rather than just take them all at once. Okay. And I do recommend Emerge Bariatrics. You can use the code ENJOY10% for 10% off your vitamins. If you get um, the multivitamin, the calcium citrate, the iron with vitamin C, and the B12 that will fulfill all your bariatric needs for after surgery. So Emerge has a chewable, this is bariatric specific, um, it has a ratio of four to one. If you get the iron, calcium, multivitamin, and B12 that will fulfill all your requirements, it is easy for your body to absorb and to use um, sugar alcohols, so they don't really increase your um, sugar intake. Um, and it is recommended for gastric sleeve patients or patients who have a restrictive procedure to take them for six to 12 months post-op. If you have something like the bypass, which is a malabsorptive procedure, you should be taking it for the rest of your life. Emerge also has a soft chew. Um, these all come in different flavors. The multivitamin comes in strawberry. The iron comes in tropical citrus. The calcium comes in caramel and water watermelon, and they do fulfill all your requirements. Emerge also has a drinkable for this one. It does combine um, your some of your calcium with your multivitamin. So if you do two scoops a day, you'd only need to take one more calcium um, later on in the day, but you also still need to take the iron and vitamin C at some point as well. And liquid formula should not um, upset your stomach because they do bypass the digestive process and they are easier for your body to absorb. Emerge also has a meal replacement with 27 grams of complete protein. That's just protein um, that has all of your essential amino acids. It also has calcium, zinc, um, biotin, which is great for hair loss. Um, and it has less than five grams of sugar. And you might be thinking, well, why do we need to take bariatric vitamins? Well, um, if you look at the, this chart compares the emerge bariatric vitamins to just regular centrium adult vitamins. And as you can see, um, if you just look even at the thiamine, um, the emerge has exactly what a bariatric patient needs, 12 milligrams of thiamine. Um, while the centrium, just adult multivitamin has 1.5 milligrams, and then the gummies have zero. So um, the regular multivitamins have a significantly smaller amount of the of nutrients in them, but also regular vitamins usually do have a lot of sugar in them, like the gummies. Um, they have two grams of sugar. And if you were to try to meet all your bariatric needs with the gummies, 
you'd probably have to take 10 of them, which would increase your bariatric, um, not your bariatric, your sugar intake to 20 grams of sugar, which is almost the full limit for um, after surgery. Um, so bariatric vitamins just have a lot higher doses, which is what is needed for patients after they have a surgery where um, their stomach is smaller, so they can't absorb as much, um, or their stomach is mostly bypassed. So it is really important to take your eMERGE, not your eMERGE, your bariatric vitamins. Uh, what about Flintstone vitamins? No, um, these are we do not allow patients to take these because one, they have a lot of sugar, and then two, they don't have any thiamine, which is really important um, to help prevent nausea and vomiting. Also, the zinc is not sufficient. Um, the vitamin D is too low. And as I said, they have a lot of sugar in them. You might be thinking, well, what about the patches? They seem like a great alternative to all of these. Um, we do not recommend patches just because not all of your vitamins can be absorbed through your skin. For example, vitamin B, all, vitam all B vitamins and vitamin D cannot be absorbed through your skin. And vitamin D is actually one of the more common deficiencies in bariatric patients. So we do not recommend patches. Um, also, there's just not a lot of research done on how they affect bariatric patients in the long run. So we just prefer that you don't use them and you just use a soft chew, chewable or drinkable vitamin. And for improved digestion, we do recommend um, a digestive enzyme. Um, it can help you digest your food after surgery. So you're, um, a lot of your digestive tract has changed. So adding this in can help break down things like chicken. Um, it can help better help you absorb your meats, your um, other foods, and it can help prevent nausea and just help with absorption of nutrients. And then we also recommend a probiotic, um, one that has a 50 billion CFU or higher. This will just kind of help restore the um, healthy bacteria in your stomach after having surgery because you will be on an antibiotic. Um, also, it'll help boost your immune system. It can help with absorption of B12. And two good brands that we recommend for a probiotic are Align and Garden of Life. For your digestive enzyme, you can just buy an over-the-counter one, um, something like a papaya, digestive enzyme would be perfect. Okay, um, let's check your knowledge one more time. And I promise these are our last two questions. Um, are over-the-counter multivitamins sufficient for post-op? Okay, since mostly everyone has answered, I'm going to end the poll. So 96% got this one correct. No, they're not sufficient for post-op. They will not give you the um, adequate nutrients to prevent any nutritional deficiencies after bariatric surgery. Okay, our next question, which vitamins should you take two hours apart? Oh, it's looking a little bit split. Okay, we'll give you a few more seconds. Okay, so 73% said iron and calcium, which is correct. So iron and calcium compete for absorption. So you do want to make sure you're taking them at least two hours apart from each other. Okay. And then some tips and tricks for your pre-op diet. Um, drink lemon water in the morning um, or even just drink a glass of water when you wake up. Um, sometimes you wake up in the morning and you're feeling really hungry. Um, a lot of the time it can just be that you're dehydrated from the night. Um, if you do do this, just wait 30 minutes before you eat your breakfast. Also, just make sure you're staying hydrated. We recommend 64 ounces of fluids a day. Um, also, eat a healthy balance of fat, carbs, and protein throughout your day. 
and have a light breakfast. Sometimes if you wake up and you eat something really heavy, you end up feeling kind of tired and sluggish throughout your day. So having a light breakfast is a great way to start off your day. Also, I recommend cooking your own meals just because you can control what goes into them. You know, you can leave out the starch, the dairy, um, the sugar. You can also control the amount of um, salt in there. So I do recommend you cook your own meals. Um, start eating really slowly and chewing well because this will be helpful in post-op. Also, it just kind of helps you be more mindful of when you're eating because sometimes if you're eating way too quickly or you're just um, distracted, you don't notice when your body tells you that you're full, so you just keep on overeating. Also, exercise regularly and get six to eight hours of sleep. Uh, just getting six a good night's rest can you know boost your immune system. It can help with weight loss, and it can also just um, positively affect your mental health. All right, I do want to mention our podcast called "Can You Stomach This." It's a podcast done by two of our past patients, Rena and Sarita, and you kind of just get their perspective on having surgery um, with Mexico Bariatric Center. Um, they also talk about the pre-op diet, the post-op diet, and they talk about common things like exercising after weight loss surgery, um, fast food and returning to work um, after surgery, or even like uh, measuring your food and your goals, that kind of thing. They are available um, or their podcast is available on basically all podcast platforms and we I believe we just released a new one so highly recommend you check it out also we have a ton of great resources on our website we have a ton of blogs uh, we also you know post things regularly in the support groups or um, on our YouTube channel Instagram and TikTok as well and now I will answer more of your questions. Um, and on the bottom of the screen, you do have my contact information. You can either take a picture of that or you can take a screenshot. Um, and at my direct line, you can either call me or you can text me your questions. Um, and I would be more than happy to answer those. Also, um, if I did go through something way too quickly, please let me know and we can go back to it. Or um, if there's a slide that you're like, I want more information on this, um, just let me know and I can go back to it. Um, someone said they can't hear me um, a while ago. I hope you guys were able to hear me now or for the rest of the um, webinar. Okay, let's see. Um, so Melissa said she's had to have caffeine since she was two for ADHD. Any advice? Um, it sounds like you might be a special case. So I'd reach out to her surgeon liaison and just check in with her because maybe she would say that you can continue to drink caffeine at a limited amount. Um, but also you might just have to cut it out as well. Um, uh, I would just recommend reaching out to her. Um, if you do need it, so one week before surgery, you should stop taking any NSAIDs. But if you do have some kind of pain and you um, want to take something, taking Tylenol is okay. So we don't um, allow you to have dairy on the pre-op diet just because it is usually full of sugar. Um, and also even like the non-dairy stuff, it has starch in it. So we do want you to avoid dairy. So you can have zero sugar drinks on the pre-op diet, like um, Gatorade Zero, Powerade Zero, um, Gold Peak tea is fine. You can also have decaf um, teas, herbal teas on the clear liquids diet, that's okay. Um, if you're a diabetic and you're worried about having lows on the pre-op diet, so the pre-op diet is a diet that should actually help you kind of stabilize your sugar, um, and you shouldn't have too many lows or highs, but you should be kind of at a stable, but it is, you know, very, very common for patients to get a low when they're on clear liquids or, um, or even if you get a low while you're on the pre-op diet, I recommend having some apple juice on hand just to kind of help you get that back up. So um, someone wants to know what foods they can eat to help with hair loss. 
Um, personally, I recommend making sure you're getting in enough protein daily. Um, even during clear liquids, like adding in um, unflavored protein powder to your clear liquids, because it can help with healing and it can give you some kind of nutrition. Um, that way, because hair loss happens if you're, you know, you're losing weight too quickly, you're not getting enough calories uh, or not enough protein. So I do recommend at least doing that. But then you can take supplements like biotin um, after surgery to help with hair loss. You can also take collagen. Um, but hair loss will happen. It's just natural just because um, you had a major surgery. Your body's focused on healing um, rather than keeping up with your hair growth. Um, someone asked for clear liquids. Do people get hungry while flying? Um, yes, people do get hungry while flying, but I recommend at least bringing some bouillon cubes with you so you can um, ha sip on a cup of broth while you're flying. So you have something to put into your stomach. Um, also, sugar-free jello and sugar-free popsicles can kind of give you the effect that you're eating as well. Yes, all of this information is available online. Um, all of this is on our website. Um, also, your husband can reach out to me if um, he has any questions, and I'd be happy to go over any of this with him as well. Um, no, the sleeve is not a malabsorptive procedure. It's just a restrictive procedure. Um, I read. So no, you cannot do the patches, um, just because not all vitamins can be absorbed through the skin. So you can't do patches. Um, so Jody wants to says she likes to drink water um, and she wants to know can she do damage if she drinks too much water at once. So no, you, you won't stretch your stomach, but it can just feel a little bit uncomfortable after surgery. So that's why we recommend you take small sips and you drink slowly. Also, it prevents adding in extra air into your stomach, which can um, cause some pain. Yes, you can take biotin. Um, after RNY, you should be taking bariatric specific vitamins because they do have a higher amount of nutrients that you need um, post-op. So this is recorded, and if you would like to get a recording of it, you can um, email me at nutrition at mexicobariatriccenter.com, and I can send you the recording once we're all done here. Um, so I usually do the pre-op diet once a month, and I also will do the post-op diet um, once a month. So the next time I have this specific webinar will be um, in October, but I will have the post-op diet webinar next um, Friday at the same time. So you should stop for the question about, can I take biotin supplements in the last two weeks leading up to surgery? So no, you cannot take them. All supplements and vitamins should be stopped two weeks before surgery. So um, you can start lifting. Um, I'm assuming you're referring to weights, like um, how soon after surgery can I lift? So you can start weight lifting eight weeks post-op, and then I would recommend that you just take it easy um, and you listen to your body and don't overdo it. Um, your second question was, I have high blood pressure. Can this be a reason why they will perform surgery? Uh, no, usually um, we have a lot of patients who do have high blood pressure and they still get the surgery and everything goes well for them. No, emerges not have collagen. We have another question. So I can have unsweetened almond milk during the pre-op. When can I have it post-op? So post-op, you can have unsweetened almond milk in phase two. So um, a little run through of the post-op diet. Phase one will be the same clear liquids from the two days before surgery. 
Phase two will be thick liquid. So that's um, things like your protein shakes. You can have blended soups. You can have sugar-free pudding. You can also start having unsweetened almond milk, um, unsweetened coconut milk. Then phase three will be soft foods. That's your foods like um, scrambled eggs, soft chicken, um, cottage cheese, soft cooked through vegetables. And then phase four is more firmer foods, but you kind of still follow phase three, but you can start adding in um, other foods as well. For the question about the CPAP while I'm under having surgery, I recommend you reach out to our surgeon liaison about that question. Um, and I can put her info on the screen. So you have it, so you can just message her and just kind of double check with that. I don't think I skipped it. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, yes, I recommend you reach out to our surgeon liaison about that. So each post-op phase is about a week long. It's five to seven days long, but I recommend just doing it for the full week. Why are sugar alcohols bad? So sugar alcohols aren't the greatest for you just because they kind of trick your body into thinking um, that you're not having sugar, but in some processes in the body, it still acts like sugar. Um, so it's not, not necessary. It's, you're not necessarily not having sugar, if that makes sense, um, but they are lower calorie. So sometimes it can be better to have a sugar alcohol rather than just plain sugar. Um, some training and support to get off of sugar. I recommend if you're a big sugar, um, in, if you have a big sugar intake, I rec would recommend, especially if you have time before the pre-op to kind of start cutting back on sugar um, because sugar can be addictive. Um, and if you try to cut it off all right at once, you can get you know withdrawal symptoms, um, like a headache, or you'll just start getting really bad cravings. So I highly recommend just kind of cutting it out if you can um, as soon as possible, just to slowly um, kind of wean yourself off. Um, for the picky eater who can't eat cooked vegetables um, and limited raw vegetables, I recommend eating the limited raw vegetables that you can um, and just finding new creative ways to cook those. Um, also, just make sure you're getting in all your protein throughout your day, a minimum of 60 grams, just because it can help you um, stay full longer and also it can help prevent cravings later on. Um, but I recommend if you can kind of branch out with your vegetables, um, just find creative ways to maybe even trick your brain into eating them um, by making them taste good, using different kinds of seasonings um, or some kind of sauces, um, like a sugar-free sauce on the pre-op diet would be fine, um, as long as it also doesn't have dairy in it or starch. Um, a hernia should not affect your stay, uh, but you can always reach out to your coordinator just to double check. Um, no, since you, um, if you're a BMI of 32 and you start your pre-op diet six weeks out, um, that is not an issue, but you do just have to make sure you do your two days of clear liquids before surgery, since technically that is um, your pre-op diet for a BMI of 32. Um, is isopure considered a clear liquid protein and allowed as part of phase one? Yes. So isopure is considered a clear liquid. I know they have like a bunch of different colors. Um, the color is okay. It doesn't really matter um, as long as you can see through it. And isopure is perfect for clear liquids and it can just kind of help promote healing as well. 
Um, protein 2O is perfect for clear liquids. Um, it's okay that it only has five grams of protein. Um, that's fine. For your shakes, though, you do want to make sure they have a minimum of 20 grams. But for your clear protein waters, uh, if they have less, that's okay. Usually, um, you'll see starch in the ingredients. Like it'll say modified cornstarch or cornstarch, or it'll just, it'll literally say the word starch on it. So that's how you can tell if there's starch in something. Um, it'll say it in the ingredients. Yes, may a light mayo is okay. Um, like a tuna salad, light mayo is okay. You can also have, um, vegan mayo. I've also had somebody make their own mayo. That's okay as long as it's um, like light mayo or um, avocado mayo is also okay to have. Yes, chicken bouillon is okay to use while cooking um, in your vegetable soup. Um, I did want to also give you guys some helpful links. Um, one second find those, um, basically some recipes as well as some recipes as well as the full printable nutrition um, guide. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to post these in the chat. Um, and for your recipes, you do want to just make sure that they have um, that they are okay on the pre-op diet. And it'll tell you at the end of each recipe, it'll say time frame, and then it'll say pre-op diet. It'll say either okay or not okay. Um, so just double check those recipes. But there are some in both both the breakfast recipes and dinner recipes that are okay. Um, yes, you can use nutritional yeast. Um, you're most welcome. Oh, well, I'm gonna also post those on the Facebook side. Let's see. Um, For Nicole, you asked where can you find those recipes that I just talked about. I posted them in the chat on Zoom. Um, there's you should have all of those um, links. So our Facebook group, um, we have. So when I'm doing the webinar in Zoom, I also do it as a live. So I try to go back and forth between the comments um, for questions. But we also do have Facebook support groups. Um, that's just there for MBC patients only. Um, oh, let me see if I can just send them to you. Um, just, oh, hold on. Okay, I'm going to see if I can type the answer. I'm going to type the um, all the links under what is Facebook group, what is a Facebook group, and hopefully you guys can get those links that way. If anything, you can also email me, and I would be more than happy to send those to you. Um, but the Facebook groups, we have support groups for our patients. Uh, we have one for patients who um, haven't had surgery or patients who are thinking about Mexico Bariatric Center, but then we do have one for patients that are booked for surgery, um, and people post questions there. Sometimes people post recipes, or um, if sometimes you'll also see like today's um, Friday, so face-to-face -face Friday, people post their before and after pictures. Um, also just like random things like a non-surgical victory just it's just a place for you to go for support um and i can also send that link i think let me see to you guys just so you guys could have it um and you can you can join if you'd like. So I'm going to post this one under if I'm planning on having kids, because I'm not sure how else to post it. I'll post it in the chat, but also I'll post it under the question of if I'm planning on having kids, how long should I wait after surgery? We recommend that you wait 18 months to two years to have kids. So on the questions and answers um, little tab, if you go to answered, all of um, those will be there 
where I look, all those links will be there. Um, if anything, you can always text me. Um, I'll put up my info once again. You can text me or you can um, email me and I can send all of these to you as well. Um, and I don't see any more questions. So I'm going to end our um, live. And I hope all of you have a great weekend. Um, please do not hesitate to reach out with questions. I'm available most of the time, um, 8 to 5 Pacific Standard Time. Feel free to call me, text me, email me, and I'd be more than happy to help or answer your questions. Or if you have like a more like personalized need, um, I'd be more than happy to help out with that. Okay, I hope all of you have a great weekend.